If you've ever tried to build a vertical video inside of Final Cut Pro, you might know that there's quite a few drawbacks. One major issue that comes to mind is if I were to take a title designed for a 16 by 9 timeline and drag that down onto my vertical timeline, you'll notice that this title isn't even showing up. I could zoom out and see that there's nothing there, and so I might need to go into the transform tool. I could click on this icon to see if that reveals anything outside of the boundaries. I could click and drag to see if that adjust the text in a way where it reveals on the screen, I might in some cases be able to jump inside of the actual plugin and finally be able to adjust the position of all of the text using a control here. It's for these specific reasons that I often suggest that people build their vertical videos over on a 16 by 9 timeline, but this can bring its own host of workflow issues. For example, let me jump onto this 16 by 9 timeline. Now I could bring that timeline down onto the timeline and we could see it here on the left side we could use the transform tool and move that into place but if we were to bring in footage that wasn't 16 by 9 say for example this shot here that's going to be revealed as a normal shot I could crop it maybe to find the edges there but all of this can pile up to a bunch of frustration because you don't know exactly where that 16 by 9 timeline should be jumping into my titles we can go into my FCB's pro vertical in here you'll see a host of different titles that we can use but you'll also find some stuff over here inside of your effects browser and inside of your transitions all of these have been designed specifically for a vertical timeline meaning that a lot of these don't even properly work inside of a horizontal timeline because they were made with a vertical timeline in mind so that brings me on to the first thing I built one thing we can do is find the social guides vertical I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag that down onto my timeline it'll act just as a regular title. Firstly, you'll notice all the different UI elements of YouTube. So if you were building a YouTube short, you would know exactly where the like button could be found. Additionally, we could change this over to the Instagram format or the TikTok format. That way you can build out your edit and know if an on-screen element is going to conflict. Additionally, you'll see this yellow line on the outside and that is a safety zone because once you upload this, you'll notice that a lot of phones automatically zoom in just a little bit and crop off those edges. So this just indicates the exact area where you can be within your video space. You can of course change the color of that if you wanted to you could drop the opacity on those but there's also another big benefit with this overlay if we were to drop in a 16 by 9 video inside of this you can see outside of the vertical area where that video is taking place plus we could select the overlay and you'll see this outside zone opacity so we could just drag that completely to zero to completely cut off those edges or bring that all the way up to a full 100% but here's the last really powerful feature because you'll know that if I were to export this video, I would actually be losing resolution on my vertical video. We've just kind of squished everything down into the middle. So once you're ready to export your video, all you need to do is go to this prepare for export button. Clicking on that will change it from none over to no UI and rotate. And you will notice that all of the changes that we built inside of that vertical area will automatically be flipped and scaled up to properly fit within the vertical format. All we need to do from here is go up to file, share, export file, we can export it to wherever we would like. And once that's completed exporting, we can go ahead and locate the file and we'll see that in Finder, it's actually on its side. But if we were to select that file and push Command R, we can now push play and notice that everything is flipped to the correct orientation. This is going to maximize the quality of your vertical videos while still maintaining the benefits of having a 16 by nine timeline in Final Cut Pro. If you are on a vertical timeline and you still wanna use these social guides, all you need to do is go into your titles, drag it on, and you'll notice that it's been properly formatted for a 16 by 9 timeline. So that's the first thing that got me super excited about building this plugin. But then I started to notice how there were different transitions that weren't designed for a vertical timeline, or there's different titles, there's different backgrounds. So I went ahead and built out a whole bunch of extra tools for you to be able to use on your vertical videos, making your life so much easier. Firstly, I built out some beautiful backgrounds for you to use, and you'll notice how this background is kind of funky here in this 16 by 9 format, but once we drop it into a vertical timeline, it looks really nice and elegant. Additionally, I've got this cool paper texture backdrop that you can use. There's this nice points background. 
You can adjust if there's the waves happening. You can of course change the colors on everything inside of your scene. And then on top of that, there's a bunch of tools like this arrow tool, which will animate in nicely. We can go ahead and scale that down. We could rotate it, place it wherever we want on the screen. There's also a nice little circle tool that draws in. We can disable that draw in animation if we want to, but another really handy tool with these lines is that we can change the brush type from solid over to chalk. So we now look like we have a hand drawn circle, which can add a lot of texture onto your videos. And that of course works with the build in animation, just like so. You can of course change the color on that as you so desire. So there's really a bunch of functionality as well as having these on-screen controls for easy manipulation of your circle. Additionally, I've added this nice little text highlight tool. I'll bring this down on the timeline and let's just go ahead and write out all of the words that I would like to say. So this is what I would say in my video if you subscribe. So now that I've done that, you'll see this anime on slider at the top. I can go ahead and drag that to zero. We could click to add a keyframe and then move forward as far as we need to, to match the timing as I'm saying these things in my video. I could just drag this out to a full 100% and now it will automatically animate and pop all of that text onto the screen. Now this isn't like an auto caption tool. You do still need to manually type out the text that will be shown on screen, but this can be a great way to show off your text for your vertical videos. And then at the bottom of our titles are these nice zoom tools. Now these are just a little bit different from my pro zooms tool. One issue that people were running into is that they needed their zooms to be less than about four seconds, which is how long it needed to be to get around some some weird glitches that happen. So I've gone ahead and made it so these zooms only need to be over one second for them to work properly. With this quick zoom vertical, you can see it zooms into place. I can click and drag to where I wanna go. I can zoom in even further. And there is some nice sharpening tools just so I don't lose any resolution. That'll animate in automatically for me and animate out. If I don't want the zoom in animation, I can go ahead and disable that here and that will just pop into place really nicely. And if I want to have a nice pan after I've zoomed, I can go ahead and click and drag my quick pan vertical down underneath the quick zoom. That is extremely important that it's underneath. And now I can go ahead and zoom out a little bit. We'll see the other on-screen control and I can just move to the secondary position I want. If I wanted a third pan, I could go ahead and drag that in one more time. And now this will auto animate all three of those positions for me. Now, if I want the zoom to go back to its original position, I'll need to make sure that these all end at the exact same time. So that's a quick look at the zoom tools, but there's also a few effects that you get when you pick up this plugin package. You can find them in your effects browser under FCB's Pro Vertical. Now, the first effect you'll see here is this outer glow. If I apply this onto a clip, you'll see we have this outer glow effect. I can adjust the radius on it, the brightness. We can change the colors of the glow. It's just a really cool looking effect, which can be super nice and versatile, especially if you've cut out a certain object and you want it to pop off the screen. Additionally, there's this outliner tool, which works with any shape. I can go ahead and drag up the width on that. We can offset it. We can adjust the color of it. We could even set it to be a gradient if we wanted to. Just a ton of powerful features in here for outlining pretty much anything you can possibly think of. Then underneath that is two powerful options for building split screens in your vertical videos. If I wanted to build a split screen, I would just need to make sure that all of these layers are stacked up on top of each other. Then from there, I'll go ahead and apply the split screen triple effect. From there, you'll see that we have this position option, which is set to the top. Let's go ahead and apply the split screen triple to the second shot, and we can change that from top over to middle. Finally, we can apply split screen triple on the bottom, and we'll just set that to the bottom setting. So now you can see how we have split up everything really nicely on our screen. Then from there, we can scale up each individual shot and move it around within this framing as we so desire. So I'll just go ahead and scale this up, maybe move over to the right side. Then from there, we can adjust the different animation types. So maybe we want the top shot to come from the left side, but we want the middle shot to come from the right side. And from there, we want the bottom shot to zoom in. So if we push play, all of these will auto animate into place giving us a really nice and dynamic animation 
for our videos. You can also, of course, adjust the animation speed on each individual clip, which can be really powerful. Next, if you ever need to bring something onto the screen, I've created a simple little pop-in animation. We can apply that onto this logo, and if I push play, you'll see how that just pops into place nice and quickly. I, of course, give you a whole bunch of controls here, like the speed if you wanna really slow it down, the amount of cycles. So it's really up to you how you want this effect to look for your videos. Then at the bottom of the effects, we also have some other zooms and pans. These are exactly like the title version, but they're powerful because we can apply it onto a singular clip. For example, if I wanted this top shot to be zooming in, we could go ahead and apply the quick zoom and we could apply this zoom above the split screen so everything will stay within that frame. We could adjust where the zoom is going into, so if we wanted to really zoom in on her eye, then we can push play and you'll see that zoom taking place all within that little box rather than zooming in on the entire screen. And finally, I've saved the best for last. I created a whole bunch of different transitions for you to use specifically designed for vertical videos. Jumping on over into our transitions, you can find them under FCB's Pro Vertical. At the very top, we've got this basic glitch transition. We have a nice melt transition. We have this beautiful painted transition and that painted transition comes with a whole bunch of different painted types. So we could go to painted two, we could go to painted three, so on and so forth with the eight different options here. There's also this pixel punch, which is one of my favorites. This is a very computer intensive effect, so you're probably gonna wanna pre-render. But if we push play, you can see how everything bursts into pixels, looking really nice and three-dimensional. We also have a projector slide animation, which is really nice and simple. There's also this cool scanner transition, and you can adjust the different values on here, giving yourself a different threshold, which is really nice. You can give yourself some different glow effects. There's this really cool shake effect and we could shorten that down to really show the impact. But if you're not happy with the shake animation, you can actually come up here and adjust the randomization of the shake. You can also adjust how much prism there is. Then there's this basic spin transition. There's this split transition, this strobe effect, and then a whole bunch of different paper tears. There's also this nice wavy wipe effect. Then at the very bottom is this zoom transition. And what's cool about the zoom transition is you can adjust where you're zooming in on the screen. So if we want to zoom into the top left corner, we could do just that. So that is a look at my new Pro Vertical plugin. I plan on adding a lot more features into this plugin in the future. And of course, all of those different updates are going to be completely free for you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.